Hi, welcome to another video and on the bench today we have a McCulloch Mac 436 and I picked this up with a job lot of other stuff so I haven't got a clue that, about the history of it um, so yeah I'm gonna initially take the exhaust off to check the piston and I'll probably take the top off and take the carburetor off to check the piston from the other side as well because I have uh, found them to be damaged from the inlet side but generally they're damaged from the um well on the exhaust side but i'll check it all make sure that's all good before i go any further and then i would imagine most of the time it's a carburetor that's the issue on these and also i've got to check for spark and then um order a carburetor kit with these things i always put a new uh, carburetor kit in them anyway if i can get one um, but i'm sure i'll be able to get one for this um and then yeah um probably chain ain't too bad but i'll probably just buy a cheap new chain for it because i shall shall be selling this if it's, if it's any good so i'm gonna get the tools together and i'll get it apart so i'll be back with you in a second So I'm going to take the exhaust off first. I'm going to just get that undone there. They're eight mil. I could use the impact, but it might be a bit harsh on them. So we'll just see if they undo a little bit, I'm going to loosen them. Yeah, I'm going to put the impact on them. Just wanted to make sure that they weren't seized in there. Yep, so I've got the impact. Um, this is a check I always do two strokes because I think it's well worth it because they will run with a bad piston in if it's scratched, but they might not run very well. So I'll just make sure it's all good first to see whether it's worth me bothering with. Let's have a look in there. You might be able to see that. I'll try and into me. Looks like no, <laughs> really, really good. Um, let me just get a torch, might show you a little bit better. Yeah, that's very good in there. So I'll just put it right the way up. Let's check the bottom part. Yeah, well happy with that. Whoever had it before me has definitely been putting um, oil in with the petrol. So that's a good sign. So I'm just going to put that exhaust back on now because, um, yeah, that's fine. So I'll just do that off camera. Exactly. I only need two bolts, so I'll do that and I'll be back with you. So now I'm just going to undo these three or four screws. I think it's three. Um, just these ones. I ha actually had loosened them. But I haven't had this off. I want to just have a look around it to sort of see the, the general condition of it. Like air filter and things like that. They're actually not for a sort of, a sort of homeowner saw. They weren't a bad saw. Um, and they look pretty clean in there. The filter doesn't look bad. It's a bit... A little bit um oh, where are we? A little bit mucky but not too bad. That'll clean, I'll clean that up and reuse that. Um the plug looks brand new. And um, perhaps I should have tried to start it before. But anyway, I prefer to have a good look around it first and just check everything and then go from there. And also I want to know what um carb diaphragm and gasket is in it. And I could all look up the model of the saw, but sometimes I found there are different carbs on it might be the same machine. But the carbs might differ slightly so i like to see the gasket and diaphragm so i can match up with a photo online and i know i'm okay and getting the right one so it's gonna have to come apart have a few of a couple of these before we're pipe or something Oh, what was happening there? Well, yeah, I remember now they've got a bit of a strange little um, throttle cable on them. How they hook around. Uh, perhaps I can release that a little bit. I 
actually I think it might be better if I try and take the carb off with it. They are a little bit tricky, I do remember now. I'm going to lift it up enough to get that off. No, I think I might have to try and hook that cable out under there somehow. Anyway, that pipe there, see that clear type pipe? I'm just going to take that off. There's actually no fuel in it, so I haven't got to worry. So we take that off, get that out of the way. I don't think I can... I can take that out there, I think, if I hold the throttle open. I don't know how well you can see, but it's a bit very tight in there. Actually, there is that as well. That unhooks. You can see the, the blue choke lever. That hook just uh, pushes away, I think. So I think I can do that with a screwdriver. Am I right or am I wrong? Can't remember. There, we've got that off. So the choke lever's off. Hopefully everything else releases a bit easier now. Actually, now that that's off, that does actually pull out altogether. So I can put that out of the way. So that's made things a lot easier pretty tight fit in there though and then we've got that piece there it's just a bit where your fuel adjusters and things are and then there's two other pipes no it's not just one other pipe one in that so I'll just get that off that would obviously have been holding it as well so that's off, so all the pipes are released. So now we've got that undone. Ah, oh, now I can get the, that's how the throttle cable goes. Yeah, so that's throttle cable, that just pulls out like that. Sometimes on com some carbs, um, there's more than one hole to put the throttle cable in. Um, I forget what make it is. I think it could have been a Husqvarna or something I worked on. But just make sure there isn't more than one, which is only one on there, so I'm fine with that. Got the carb off. Yeah, the throttle cable did actually run around the bottom of that filter housing. Let me just get the torch. You can just see there. It ran around through that little gap in the middle. There's a little slit there, and it went around there. So that's what it ran on. I'm just going to look at the piston from this side in, in there. You won't be able to see this because of um, it sort of goes down at a bit of an angle. Pull it over, let's have a look. Very good. So we know all the um, cylinder and piston side of things is good. Now on the bench we have a little Walbro carb. Um, not sure the numbers on it. I should. Oh yes, yeah, the numbers are there. Yeah, WT662. So I'm going to take this apart because I couldn't really find um, the diaphragm and gasket for this by the number. So if I take it out, I'll be able to match it up. So let's take this side off first. Just like that. Put that off. You can see it's very rippled in there. So that could be a sign why it hasn't been used or perhaps um, it just hasn't been used and it's gone like that because it hasn't been used for so long. Who knows? We'll get that off because then I can match that up with the new ones. I haven't really got to worry about the gasket coming off at the moment, but I will take it off. If you actually look at that, actually, we'll look, look, at, look at That just wouldn't be no good. I'm going to see if I can order the kit. I'm sure I saw... Well, there's a few kits, but I just want to match them up. And it's quite a run-of-the-mill one. I'm sure I've seen them like this on these before. So, But if it isn't in the list, I'm going to have to uh, match it up. It's always the best way anyway, to be honest. You can go by part numbers and everything. I've even ordered things by part numbers and everything. They've, they've got it wrong. Half the time, it's not actually mechanics that are doing it. It's just um, stores people. So they know they know the computer side of it. They know the numbers. But sometimes, if you're a mechanic, you sort of you sort of know. You know, um, they'll just do. They'll just follow the computer. I've actually had to put them right myself before with steel parts. Um, 
yeah, they gave me a primer bulb, which was a pump one, and it was the one that was an all-in-one one with the two little pipes on. And um, yeah, they give me the totally wrong one because the computer said that's what carpet had on, and it and it didn't. And that was with the um, machine numbers and everything. So you think with the part numbers, it's sort of foolproof, but it isn't always. I've got that off. That is no good. I split that as well. Um, that's all all right, the needle valve and everything. I will clean it out, but that will all be okay. They generally don't go wrong, to be honest. They do sell them in the complete carb kits. I should have actually given it a clean before to get all that off, but I just want to get it apart and see what's what. So it's just that. We've got the little screen thing in, which actually could be used again. It wouldn't really matter, but it comes in the kit. Uh, we have the gauze in there, which looks very clean. I'll probably, I'll be tempted to leave that in there because it's so clean. I don't start the saws or streamers or whatever it is, the two-stroke stuff, before I start working on it. For one reason, if it runs all right, I might be tempted to leave it and sell it running okay. Um, but a few days down the line, a week down the line, a month down the line, something like that, it might, eat. I doubt it would have run with that, but you never know, if I put some fuel in it and that, it might have run sort of okay with that, and that would have been in there. I want to know that it's got a replacement one in there, and I class these sort of things as a serviceable item, and um, so, um, yeah, especially if I'm selling a machine, I want to make sure it's got a new plug in it, it has to have new oil in it, new oil, two strokes obviously don't um new filter or clean filter and make sure all the lines are, are right all the fuel lines are all good the um uh fuel filter and all them bits and pieces and a gasket and diaphragm and i do that on like the briggs classic lawn mowers as well put a new one in everyone even if it's running fine just for peace of mind really it is more work and a bit more expense but if i sell something it's as good as i sort of can possibly get it i think actually that's all i need to take off of there i'm going to actually quickly just put the bits back on um but i can do that off camera and then i'll be back with you for the for the clean down and then the new kit when i get it well now some parts have arrived for this mcculloch chainsaw so let's look at what we've got i've actually bought well it all come together it was one of these kits where you get your cheap Chinese carb, which is exactly the same. So we've got that. Along with it came an air filter, which I'll definitely use. Fuel filter, another fuel filter in there. A spark plug, which I probably won't use. I'll use one in it because it's brand new and it's, probably, it's a champion. This will be... that just a number on it no make or anything so i won't use that in this i think the other one is fine like i said anyway i can think it's brand new in there or as good as new a couple of gaskets which i probably will use so i'll put them over there and some fuel line which i'm just going to check the fuel lines and and see what they're like i'll decide whether i replace them or not but also I, I want to save the original carb, which actually is in this bag over here. And do a clean out of this carb and fit a new diaphragm and gasket, which is in that bag. So I think I'm going to stick with the original carb because it's an original wool bro. But for how much the other kit was for the air filter, the fuel filter, there's even a primer bulb in there as well, which this saw actually doesn't have. But... Would have bits and pieces. It was such a cheap deal. But um, I really wanted to clean the car out and keep the original one on this. So that's what I'm going to do firstly. And let's hope all is good with that. And then, yeah, that'll, be, that'll fix it. But if not, I've got the cheaper carb to fall back on. So it's a win-win situation, really. It didn't cost me that much. So, yeah. So what I'm going to do first is uh, probably... 
and just check them fuel lines. So I'll do them off camera and I'll let you know what I think of them and then we'll go from there. I'll just bring you back in here actually. I've noticed it does have a primer bulb. That's the new one. And there's actually one in there. And I forgot they had one actually. So I'm gonna take that side off and then I can check the fuel lines a lot better from when I've got that recall bit off and then see if the lines need replacing. And yeah, I think the primer to me feels not very good, but I'll check that and see if that replacement one fits, if that's the same. If not, I'll have to see what I can do. But I'll have a look at it first. I've nearly undone all the screws now, but there's one last one here. Thought you might as well see where they are. There's one there, one there, one there, and there's one right at the front there. So it's easy enough to get that off. So let's see if that lifts up. Nice and clean in there. And actually that primer bulb, I believe, it's the same, yeah, it is the same. Because I'm not sure whether it actually said this kit was for this actual chainsaw, but all the numbers of everything and everything matched up. But I think it would have been for a Poulin. But I think they're much the same. Well, they might have even made a model and just uh, badged it Poulin instead of McCulloch. I think it might be something like that. Um, because I think that's what it said in the title anyway. It's for a Poulin. But um, yeah, everything's the same. So I'm going to get that off now. It's two Phillips screws there. Might as well replace it. It doesn't actually look too bad, but it's a little bit soft, so I might as well replace it as it comes in the kit. There we go. Now I've undone the primer, primer bulb. Well, actually, it's come out now. It's pulled out of one pipe, which is pretty poor, to be fair. And um, where does that one go? That goes into the tank at the back. I'm going to actually replace them as I've got them. They're a bit hard and, yeah, they're not very supple. And as I've got some new pipe that come with the kit, I might as well replace them. That come off the smaller one. So I'm going to do them um, off camera and I'll just sort of give you an overview of what I've done with them. But basically it's just like for like. I'll just cut a length that long and put it there. And then I'll pull the other one off. Um, which is deep down in there and then I'll do the same with that and just replace that one that one I'm tempted to leave because I think it's okay and that's in quite good condition so I'm going to probably leave that one I'm not going to complicate things any more than I have to because the saw is in pretty good condition but these pipes are, are a bit old especially that one that's the worst one that's quite quite solid and yeah it's not very flexible so that one's going to get changed and that one and actually that one's thinner i have got some but not in not in this kit this bag so yeah i'm gonna leave that one and just do the other just do the other two so i'll be back with you when i've done that i've decided that thinner one does need to be replaced as well so i'm gonna have to do it i've just got my trampoline spring tool thing here just to hook the filter out of the tank if i can i'll be able to it just depends how long it will take me to do it a bit awkward there we have it that's out it's not really nice it needs to come out so i've got that out now then i'm just going to see if i can just pull this other one out you just come a little bit a bit tidier here i have got some i think it's blue and that That'll be the thickness. I'm half tempted actually to cut that there. If I cut that. By cutting it, I know how much was actually out at the top. I'll just put that to the side over there. And then I know how much was actually in the tank as well. And there we have it. Yeah, it wasn't great. Yeah, what I've got to do is feed the new pipe through that little hole there. So, yeah get that done i haven't really got any pipe thin enough but this is the thinnest i've got so what i've done is cut an angle on it so it's thinner so i can get that through the hole that distance i've already done the back one get it through that distance and then hopefully i can grab it from inside the tank and the rest will pull through 
I've still got the rest of the roll actually on there. I haven't cut it to length yet. I'm going to do that once it's all through. But I'll just get it. It might shake around a little bit. But I'll just tip it on its side. And then I can see it in there. I can just see it. I think I can just grab it. And it's coming through. So what I'll do, I'll pull it through so you can just see it. Try and keep pulling it nearer to the top so you don't stretch it any more than you have to. There we go. There it is now. I'm just going to pull that through a little bit further, cut the end that piece off so I've got a straight, nice bit of pipe, and then I can put the, the new fuel filter on it then. So I'll do that and then we're well on our way with sorting this. Just well actually while you're while it's still recording, just I'll just put it through a little bit more. Only through as much as you possibly have to, then you don't have to keep pulling it. I'm just about about there. So I'm gonna shot it but then just snip the end off nice and level. Get it on there if it'll go, it should go. It's gonna be quite a tight fit, but that's good. There we go, that's on there fully there. So I can drop that in the tank now, and then I'll just check that it's sort of floating around in the tank good enough. Chainsaws is actually not so vital, strimmers move backwards and forwards in all different angles. Chainsaws sit sort of flat most of the time and um, so that probably is about good enough I might just give a little bit more in the tank but not much so let's get on with the carb I've already had it undone um, as you saw earlier in the video because I wanted to check the gasket and diaphragm was the same as the one I was buying so I'm just gonna undo them four screws Like I said at the beginning of the video, I think the saw had just been hanging around really with um, no fuel in it or it could have had fuel in it evaporated away and just the things a bit dry and crusty like the um, fuel filter and that. So um, yeah, we'll see if we can sort this carb out and then, like I said, we should be good to go. I'll just take them bits and just let them all, all, all drop into the, the bowl at the moment. I like this bowl actually, it's good for carbs. So them bits are off, I'll get the needle valve and all that out now. Just the one the one Phillips screw. Just let that drop all in the, the pot. And there's that little spring. I want that to get away from me. And did the little, no, I didn't fall out, just, just have to lip pull that up. A little knife will do it. To get that out, the needle out, there we go. So yeah, I'll put all that in there. Uh, I want that gasket off, because I'm gonna replace that gasket. Nice when they come off. And don't leave any on there. Which it has, which is good, because it saves me cleaning it. Um, I'm gonna leave the gauze in. Uh, for the reason, it's so, so clean in there anyway. And if I start picking it out and that, I'm gonna probably just damage it a little bit and put it back in. I'm not sure whether the kit, I haven't undone it yet, comes with a new one, but it doesn't need a new one. That'll be fine. So I've just got to blow that through with a carb spray. What else? Um, I really should take them out, but they're not the ones with the screws in. I might have a tool for them to get them out, but tell you what, I'm half tempted to leave them. So let's get the carb spray and give this a blast. Remember? I nearly forgot, safety glasses. Blew the um, pipe off. I think I've said before, these um, STP carb sprays come with a uh, top, you can't put a straw on. So I think that's off of a WD-40 or something. So I just changed it, I, I just changed it over so I can have a straw on it, because it's much better. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna have to invest in some safety glasses as well, because these ones are so scratched I can hardly see. But I'm just going to give it a, a light spray first. And then blast that down.
I'll just do it away from the bench. So I've blown off the I've blown off the carb. I will just blast through the holes in a minute. But as I was waiting for the compressor to build up, you don't want to hear that noise. Even though that one isn't too noisy actually. But um, yeah, I've cleaned up some of the other little bits. I'll just show you them as I'm putting them back. Actually, my air is up a bit. The pressure's up a bit too much. But that's clean. Um, I'm actually just going to lay it down a little bit. So the, bear, the little bolts will be fine. I will just actually and lose them. It'll be okay. There's a little needle valve. I don't generally do too much to them because I'll just get a bit of paper towel and just clean on the end. That will be fine. Just, I'm just blowing out the, the end of the screws because there was a bit of gunk in them. I'm still debating whether to take them out. Tell you what, if I find the tool, I'll take them out. So I managed to find the tool. So um, let's screw them in. This is the low side. There's a little L on there. If you can just see the low and the high. So I'm starting off with the low and I'm going to put the screwdriver well, it's not a screwdriver, but the tool there, and I've got the writing there, so I know how many turns. So that'd be half, one, half, two. That's it, so it's two turns out. So let's get that all the way out. Remember for me, please, because I'll probably forget. I should write it down. All the way in and two turns out. I'm going to put that, I'm going to get it out. There is a little piece on the end, so just be careful you don't lose that. I'm going to put on the left hand side of all the bits so I know that's a low. And then let's get this other one out. But we've got to screw that in first, same again. So that's half, one, half two nearly two and a half the high one I'm going to leave that all together because it's got a sort of a clip round it so I'm just going to put that on the opposite side so the left one is on the left side um and yeah i'll give them a blast through i better be careful because there was that little plastic bit on one side and there didn't happen to be one on the other so i don't know where it's pulled a bit out with it so i'm going to have to be a bit careful there with the air i can see it coming through at the other side lovely there I think I've covered everywhere I haven't gone through there have I just come out of my hand so that must all be good a little bit through that um there then that'll come through the cord hope you can see okay because these glasses are so scratched I can hardly see a thing but I'm happy with that so I'm just going to blow that off away from the bench and then I'll be back with you. So firstly, I'm going to get the fuel adjustment screws back in. Uh, this was a high one, like I said, because it was um, the one with the springs still on it. So I'll just get that started. So and then I'll grab the other one. There's still got a little bit on the end. That's just going to push into place as I go. But I don't think I blew that one off. Just going to have to be careful. I don't want to lose a little bit. 
Not that there was any gunk on it. I think they were clean. As long as I can just get them back in, I'll be happy to get these ones back in. So I'm just going to screw them both all the way in. And do you remember how many turns out? Luckily, I do. And as I'm making this video, none of you can contact me as I'm making it. I'm going to have to remember. <laughs> uh, so that's tight, and I've got the writing at the top again. So the low one was two, I remember that. Half one, half two. The general uh, rule of thumb, I've always actually unscrewed them one and a half. But as these are already set at that, and it's the original carb, I believe it's the original carb, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I'll do it what it was. This one was not quite two and a half, but nearly two and a half. So that's half, one, half, two. Go about there, I think that'll be about right. Can always finally tune it when it's on the saw. So now I've got to get the new um, diaphragm and gasket set out the packet because I haven't and I hope it is right but I did match up everything so it should have been so if they've sent me the right one what was on the picture everything should be should be good just putting all my little bits on here so everything is there for when I need it there we go and yeah I'll undo the packet and we'll get this fitted so I've just been trying to have a sort out because the kit come with all them bits and four bits over there which I need, or three bits over there at the moment, which I need, and all them bits of Welch plugs, spring, the lot. Two needle valves, everything. But I don't need all that because I'm going to go with some of the bits are already out of it. Uh, one thing confused me a little bit. There was This was the original one. I have that one there, which is the same. And then I have that one there, which is the same. But that is slightly different sort of material, just slightly. So I'm not gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with the one, even though it's black. It's much the same as that. Um, yeah, let me know if that makes any difference. Would it make any difference if I use that one or the other one? I haven't got a clue. I'm just gonna go with that one because it's a little bit, it's smooth like that one. That's the only reason I'm gonna go that way. So yeah, I've got all the bits. I've got the, that, 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 and the gasket is actually, in place on there so what i'm going to do is just put these bits to the side and then just keep what i need and then get it put back together so now here's that tricky bit of getting this um little needle needle valve spring in i've done plenty of them it should be fine and actually in that kit i've got a spare spring if i happen to ping it but hopefully i won't i just usually just hook that in so that's in place like so rest the spring Sometimes I find you have to sort of wedge up the carb a little bit, but this one seems to be okay. And just go for it and try and do it first time. Top of the spring. And we are in. It's just a little screw, which I have mislaid at the moment. That's there. And then that actually is the hardest bit. Just make sure you don't cross thread it. Just tighten it, but you haven't got to go stupid. That'd be good enough. Just check everything's working in there. Just bring it close. Just check that the spring is sort of in there. You can just see it just in there. Check it's just properly in place and it is so that's all good um, then you've got gasket which that's the wrong one the locating holes are on are on there so you know you got that right and you've got the diaphragm which goes that way like so 
and that goes on that way you can tell how that goes on because of that little hole there so we'll get that in place and then I've mislaid one of the little screws but I can find that in a minute could be still in the bowl <laughs> And then off camera, I'll tie it and then put the other one in and then I'll bring you back in to do the other side. So now I'm going to get this last bit of the carb together and um, the screen goes on second. So on that part, the gasket goes on first. Then just grab the edge of that, like a little tab on the edge of there a bit so you can hold it there. Put that one over the top. like so so I hold it like that and I get that like that just hold that throttle bit back a little bit and then just put them together like that hope call that okay it's pretty simple but make sure that the gasket is on that bit first so it goes that bit gasket then the screen then the carb so yeah so the screen is nearest the carb and then we just got to put that little screw back in screw bolt thing and then that is the actual carb done ready to put back on the machine so what i've now done I'll just get a screw what I've now done is cut that pipe. It's a little bit long, but I want to make sure I've got enough when I put the carb back on to connect that to the pipe on the carb that side. I've got the other one that's come out the back hole and that goes to the long, where are we? It goes to the long one on the primer bulb. And then this one, we've got on the short one and that goes to the carb this side. So all the pipes should be good now. I'm not going to screw that primer bulb in yet because I might have to trim up. I'll show you, I might have to trim up bits and pieces around there. So now I'm going to try and get the carb back on, which is one of the most easiest carb in the world. But we've got the gasket on there, so that's all good. My hands—I will apologise. My hands will be in the way, uh, and you have got choice here. Really, you can put this on first, or you can put it on afterwards. Uh, I think it's just going to snag up putting it on first. I think it's easier to put it on afterwards. Um, it's, that's how you get it out. You squeeze them two together and then it pushes out of, which one was it? I think it was that black one there, the black hole there. Yeah, because that's the throttle one. Um, so yeah, that just pushes in there like so and then they push together. It's a bit tricky to get out that, but yeah, man, it's got it done. So now that is the bit that causes me the issue. That thing is always in the always in the way, but we will try to sort it out. I've just got to work out is that gonna go lower? I'm the wrong way around at the moment. That's gonna go in there like so. So that's gonna hook under the carb, so I think. That is going to have to go on now. Just hold it in place. Yeah, I want that one below. That one above it should do the job. So I've put that pipe that comes from the other side of the tank under the cable, that black cable, and the other one over. I'm hoping that's going to be, be okay. And also, we want the throttle cable in place before we put it on. It's all a bit of a tight fit, but it does it does go with a bit of fighting. Just make sure you have that gasket in place and pushed. I mean, everything seems to be getting in the way a little bit at the moment, but we are. We'll win.
how well you can see that, but the carb actually is on. Them two pipes are okay, presently okay. Make sure that that cable is through that little gap in the middle there, which is not actually at the moment, so. Sorry, just not the camera. Should have done that actually before. I don't know whether I'm gonna get away with it now. I don't want to break the cable. Got a little bit of play because you can pull the you can pull the throttle back to release it a little bit. I'm not far off. Ugh, nearly. Sorry, my hands are right in the way, but I'll show you when I've done. Done it. Sorry, sorry you can see that, but it is in there now. It was a bit of a job that was, but I didn't want to have to take the car back off again to do that. Let's see if I can see a little bit of what's going on. I actually think these are the most fiddliest things I ever worked on actually. Give them some machines don't seem to want to play ball with you some people will find them really easy like i'll find some machines easy what other people will find more difficult but that is all looking good i believe so i've got all that back on now but i have forgot something the pipes on there that should all be okay tucked in there um but i forgot to put the gasket between there and the carb and I can't even find it at the moment. I'll grab that in a second. And then I still have the choke pieces go back on as well. So I'll do them. I'll find that. Oh, and I forgot that as well. So it's going to have to come off a little bit to get them bits in place. Yeah, if you lift the carb up enough, you can get that rubber piece in. So I've done that now. So actually all I have to do is do the gasket now which I've mislaid somewhere so we'll be back with you in a minute I've got one here but that isn't the correct one so I've got to find it so that'll be the last bit to do on that apart from screwing them in which actually I could do now I could do them just so that's done so I'll just be in because that should all be good check the, key, the pipes don't kink or anything So now that's going to be back on. So that'll be that part done. And yeah, I'll just search out, find this gasket, and then we can get that in and get it bolted in place. Oh, and there is also the choke bit, actually. I'll do that, do that now. If I can do it, actually, like this. There is a rubber piece there, and that locates into the sort of plastic body of the saw. So I want to try and get it all in, all in together. Done that, got that to there. So if I just can pull it back far enough, it feel clear there, which means me problem, it won't. But being plastic, can maneuver it a little bit. But you don't want to break it. I think that's another thing the car might just have to be pulled back a little bit to make room. We are so so close. And we are in. The rubbish just got to be repositioned a little bit. The screwdriver. 
bottom one there. I'm sure you can see that. It's only actually locating the grommet in place. Which we are nearly there, but not quite. Are we there? Yeah, we are there. So I've just got to run the gasket and then we should be all good to go then. Just get it back together. I found it because what I had to do was actually cut a bigger hole out because the hole was too small. It didn't allow the choke to go. Um, so I had actually test fitted this part before. But um, yeah, I found out I had to cut that out. So we put that over and there's a little hole there. It's like a little brass type hole there i just match a hole up with there because it's the only one it actually matches up with so um i'm not actually sure whether it makes a difference there because that's just for the sort of rod pin that goes through the choke thing but anyway i'll match them up because that's where it the only place it can go that's level with a with a hole and then let's try to wrestle this in that's all i have to do with this saw we are nearly there and yeah we've got that in now so now hopefully i'll get these little nuts started on here if i just push the carving a little bit i should be able to yep that one started the other one will be fine and just tighten it up i'm pretty sure everything should be pretty good on the carb now side of things well the fuel system actually because I replaced all the pipes and everything the configuration of the pipes is actually a little bit confusing because the one that goes in at the back of that side comes across to the primer bulb and the one that comes out of the tank this side goes over it's a blue one and that goes over to on top of the carb that side so it's a little bit Confusing. Actually, I'll show you on that new car because someone working on this might get stuck on that. Let's put that. That's yeah. That's where the choke would be, and that one there is the blue one on there. So that blue one goes all the way into the tank. So it goes from there all the way into the tank. The whole on the tank this side. There's one that comes up just under there at the back, a pipe, that goes underneath the carb, and that goes to the primer bulb, and then the small one from the primer bulb goes to that. So that's how it goes. Um, but it's sort of a bit, little bit confusing. Um, so I sort of had to go back from my videos to make sure I had it right. Um, so that's all, should be good to go. I did tighten them, didn't I? You'll shout the camera, yeah, you did. It gone over the top. But, um, so I've done that, I've tightened up all of that. So I'm just gonna put this side panel on now. You haven't really got to see that. I'll just place it in place and I'll screw them four in. One there, one there, one there. I told you earlier actually. And one, where are we? One there, just there. But I'll get them done and then I'll get the bits and pieces back together and then we'll see if it'll run up. Now I'm going to check through that everything on the carb is okay, like the choke and everything. So I'll pull the choke and it's pulled that into place there. That shut and that's released it. It's working fine. It's fully closed. As you can see in there. That's all working fine. The on off seems to all be working fine. Yeah, because on this, when you pull, that's throttle working fine. But when you pull the choke on, it actually locks in to that one as well. So let me show you on this. Get it the right way around like that. So when you put a choke on, it clicks in like that. And when you rev it, it releases it. So it sort of locks it like that on the throttle one. And that's how it works. So I think that's all I think that's all good to go. It seems to be it seems to be pretty good. So now we can get the new air filter in. I checked for spark and it did have spark and I've just um, tightened it to make sure it was tight. 
that should be able to go back onto there now so it should, should be all good there yeah so now the top just goes on um there is one of them fell off one of them little tab bits to take the screw that goes in the front here there's three of them on there there's two, one under there and one under that side of that filter housing as well but they're all in place we'll get this back in place which should be pretty easy which it was uh I'm just using a flattened screwdriver because these actually take, I think it's a Torx as well, but the screwdriver does work. So I'll get them tightened up. The reason I think I remember rightly, there was only three of them. Yep, so that's all good. Um, I'm going to get chain bar back on. I'm not actually going to... I'm not actually going to clean that out at the moment. It's not too bad anyway. But um, I'm going to probably just purchase a new chain for it. If I can get one for sort of cheap one, seven, eight quid or something. Um, if I sell, that's a good selling point. And I've got to make sure the oil is working as well. Because I have had them play up on these before. But I'll do that off camera, the bar. And then we'll go for start up and see how it runs. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. It runs well. I don't fancy putting that carb on, that new one. It's a bit of a... I do I don't get on well with these ones for some reason um let me know in the comments if you've worked on one of these and what you think I find them fiddly things but I've got there um and yeah all should be good hopefully so now I've filled it with chain oil or well, half filled it filled it with some fuel uh what else have I done I've pumped up the primer bowl and it actually pumps up lovely so it's just right um on is up choke is out and I might have to just get a different angle here. Yeah, let's see how it goes. Firing. Give that pump a few more times. Perhaps it don't need choke. It's firing, but it's not going as yet. just need to go up the tick over needs to just go up a little bit i'll just get a screwdriver and do that i've just turned a little bit before now look let's see looks like now As you can see, it runs all right. It ticks over all right now. Um, I'll give a proper test cutting some wood. If I have to tweak them, fuel adjustment screws a bit, we'll see. Um, but it seems to be okay. There's oil on the chain, so the, the oiler is working. So I can sort of call that a done job, really, I think. Um, I will order a new chain. Yeah, you can see it's oiling well there. What did I do? I did a uh, clean the carb, 
new um, carb diaphragms, gasket and all the bits in there. Um, new fuel lines, um, new air filter, new fuel filter. Um, already had a new plug in it. So yeah, that's one pretty sorted saw really. Um, so yeah, so if you um, liked the video, uh, please like, subscribe, and I'll be along with another video again soon. So thanks for watching and bye for now.